All right, so today we are going to do kind of a quick tune test session. Um, we got three saws lined up for you today. So we are getting ready. These are the final moments before saw fest. And it's like the final tune and tweak and everything is what we're doing. So we're going to slowly work at uh, getting everything its final run and ready for saw fest. Alrighty, let's give them a quick run. What you're looking at here is Bellhopper, the Bellhopper built 372. It has been switched over to a C83 chain and an eight pin sprocket. Uh, this wood is almost exactly 12 inches in diameter, which is probably going to be what's ran in this class. Well, this class might be on a 14 inch piece of wood, but 12 or 14 inches of wood is what we're expecting on this class. So that's, uh, you know, what we're testing on. Um, the same with all of these saws. They're probably going to be a piece of wood right around that size, and that's why we're going with this. Uh, so... Let's see how she does with an eight pin setup on C83. So what do you say? Let's get on with it. We got two more to do after this. Alrighty. <laughs> Too bad for an eight pin you know what i mean she's pulling pretty freaking good up next here is the pulling she's set up with c83 chain on an eight pin no raker adjustments on any of these c83 chains <laughs> second the chain went loose it's screwing with it all right let's try that again i might be wrong the uh i think we need to hit this bar with a closer or i might change out to a different bar for the races something that's a little tighter this one's got a little more wiggle than i think it should and that might be part of what i'm feeling here <laughs> It's the bar. I got too much wiggle. That's what's throwing me off. So we'll just run a different bar for the races. That's all, you know? But she's running pretty good. All right, so up next here, we're actually gonna be cutting on this because we're very, very early in the build of this saw. Uh, like literally last night. <laughs> so you've heard me talk about the 372, this is it. This is the 372 build that we've been working on. This is the one to replace the Dalmar. Um, so the Dalmar is toast. Uh, I tried to give it a tune and she didn't survive. She only made it a couple of cuts and lost all the power. Um, so it would not have made it a salt fest. It would have just been one of those situations where it died in the last cut kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of a good thing that it happened now. Um, so the Dalmar project is going to be sitting until 
I get another, well, I'm going to replace everything on it, I think. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and build an, or pour up another cylinder and, and everything. So we'll get into that more in the future. But the Dalmar, it has, it has officially failed. So this is the 372 that's going to replace it. This is a Neotech 372. Uh, it's a 50 millimeter setup. Um, this is a repair. This is a repair job. This is Joey's saw. Uh, so it has, it needed everything, like literally everything. So it has a highway crank, SKF bearings. The seals and everything came from Wolf Creek. Uh, what else? The cylinder, the cylinder on it is a used cylinder off of one of the Farmertech 372 XP Pros. So it's the Farmertech Pro cylinder, which is probably the worst freaking cylinder you could ever try to port on. Their, their plating is so horrendously thick that it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so what else? Uh, the piston, I can't remember the name of the, the brand of the piston. It came from uh, HL Supply. It's like a $30 piston that they sell. It comes with a caber ring. Uh, so some of you probably might be familiar with that. But that's the piston that's in it. Uh, and whenever I machined the piston, it definitely seemed a little harder than some pistons that I've done, some of the cheaper ones. So it might actually be a decent quality piston. Um, I mean, if you think of all the parts that I just put into this thing, uh, it sh he should have a really good, good running saw. Uh, a lot of the parts, I mean, you know, we got the Farmer Tech cylinder, but it's like the best Farmer Tech cylinder, you know, uh, the highway crank. I mean, if you're building one of these 372s and it's one of the Neotech versions, the crank is one of the big weak points. Um, they're, they're off on their specs on the crank. So, you know, uh, either you try to fix it or you replace it. And, you know, we replace the crank, put a highway one in it. Oh, it does have a timing advance. I took 17 thousandths off the keyway and gave it a timing advance too. But this is literally the first time I'm going to get to, to run it in this configuration. I did run it one other time. Uh, Joey saw that footage and I wasn't happy with it. So, you know, now we're going to, I'm going to give it another, another run here. This is going to be the first time you guys have seen this. Uh, I started out using the original Neotech piston in eliminating the top ring and, uh, after that first test run, I knew that that wasn't going to work. I wasn't building the compression I like and everything. So I picked up that other piston and I threw in it. And that's kind of where we're at right now. And hopefully this works out because I only get to give this saw a couple of cutting sessions until saw fest. <laughs> so hopefully everything checks out. It seemed good on the bench. We're going to find out today how it does. Alrighty, uh, 24 inch bar, big piece of wood. We're going to put her to work. Oh, by the way, I had to eliminate the compression release on this one. I typically do prefer to put them in, but the compression release was leaking pretty bad. Uh, if you replace your compression releases, I always suggest to go OEM. The compression release specifically is one of those parts that you almost always want to go OEM. The Neotech ones fail relatively quickly, and the Farmertech ones are kind of most of them are okay, but you'll have some failures. The OEM ones are the ones I prefer. They just seem to last better. And this one was failed, had failed, so I, I just plugged it. So in the future here, we're going to see about putting a new compression release in it. I prefer to have them with compression releases. I don't know, maybe I'm getting old. Oh, 
So I put a 20 inch bar on it. This is the way it's gonna be ran at the races. And we're gonna give a, a quick test run on the 20 inch bar. Alrighty. <laughs>
I wanted to put the 20 inch bar on it because that's the way it's going to be at the races. But I freaking started this thing and it went stupid pig rich. There must have been something funky with it that it needed shut down and I don't know. But now the carb's tuning up just fine. <laughs> Hopefully uh, we don't need another carburetor. But yeah, other than that, uh, having trouble. The C83 definitely is different in the starting of your cuts. You'll hit and it'll just want to glide off. Uh, I wonder if it's because the wood don't have any bark on it that it does that. You know what I mean? That kind of makes it more difficult. But otherwise, yeah, I'm happy. So there she is. Completely happy with that. I'm no problem. I'll show it with salt fast with that. Uh, I'll have to run it in that class. It's like 82 CC and under. Uh, but this saw, because it's a clone and all the aftermarket parts and everything, it'd be eligible that uh, it could be ran in the Clone Wars or the other class. So it's, it's actually eligible for two classes to, to be ran at Solfest. So uh, technically you could build your three clones, your G366, your 372, and your 660, and run them in the regular classes the next day. So three saws get you six races right there. I'm taking six different saws, but you don't have to, you know? You could build a 372 and run it in the 100cc class if you wanted to. You can run in, an, in, in bigger classes. You just can't go backwards. You can't take a 372 and run it in a 50cc class. But you can go up. Uh, but there it is. Three of my uh, saws are going to Saw Fest. And I think Joey's going to be quite pleased with that. Needs a little more running, and it is a little on the hotter side. He's not, he doesn't own anything, and it's a little on the hotter side. So this is going to be his first time, uh, first saw. <laughs> so you know what I mean? Uh, I think he's going to be completely happy with that thing right there. I'm kind of curious to see where it ends up whenever she's broke in. You've seen it. You've seen it on enough of my videos. What happens when they break in? They just they find a whole new level in the ladder. I mean, we're at the first tank here. Uh, by the time you get three to five tanks, you end up seeing a jump. And then after you get several gallons in it, you see another jump, you know? So as this thing breaks in, it's just going to run better and better and better. But yeah. Hey, hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you in the next one. Later.